Hi everyone, this is Mike and I'm finally back to do another tutorial for this skinnable platformer made in Construct 2. And what we're going to do today is learn how to give the player character a double jump feature. And the way we're going to do that is by creating some additional events in the event sheet associated with any level. And as you can see in the event sheets uh, property for this level, level 1, there we go, for level 1, you can see it's set to level events, and if we go down here under event sheets, we double click on level events, these are the events that make the entire, uh, every level of the game actually function. And we're going to be adding a few events to this to make the jump, double jump possible. But before we start adding any events, I want to cover something that's really important to know about Construct2. Events are not the only way to make important things happen within your game. So if I go back to level 1 and I click on some of these sprites, uh, this one is especially important, this one called Invisible Player Rect or Rectangle. Um, if you look, there's this uh, section called Behaviors. And uh, this one has a platform behavior, and that means it's going to behave as though uh, it's a platformer um, player for a platformer game. And there are these features you can set. And the cool thing about this is even if you had absolutely no events yet, you can actually make uh, the very foundation for a game with a character that can already move and jump around and land on blocks. So just... So just to demonstrate what I'm talking about, let me go back to uh, the properties for the level itself and the event sheets, I'm actually, instead of choosing a level events, I'm going to choose none. So now this level literally has no events or no quote unquote code happening for it. Um, but another thing I need to do for this demonstration, if I click on this sprite here, you'll see by default, uh, or normally it should be set to invisible. So I'm going to make it visible. Okay, so now that this is visible and there's no events at all associated with this level, uh, if I actually run it, you'll see now we can see this green rectangle. And this is what I actually use in the platformer uh, to control the, the player. And you can see that now I'm using the arrow keys right now and I can actually move, I can walk around, I can jump and it automatically collides with walls and floors and all of this is happening with no events whatsoever uh, just by setting the, um, the behavior the, or giving this object a platform behavior. The other thing I needed to do was to give all of the ground tile objects a behavior called solid. So the way you do that, uh, to give any kind of behavior to a sprite or another object, is to click on Add and uh, Edit under Behaviors, and then click the plus, and then you just pick um, Jump Through is a platform that you can jump up from, from beneath, but then when you're falling down, you land on it. So that's another type of platform uh, you can use for platformer games. Um, and the other option is solid, which would be usually be up here too, but because I already have the solid behavior, uh, it doesn't give it to me as an option because I've already got that um, it's already set up. So cancel that. So that's how you set it up as uh, you give something a behavior. Uh, and because these are set as solid and the screen sprite is set up as a platform movement with these attributes, um, all of that works for me without me having to do much at all. Uh, you may have noticed when I played the level, the character by default can't jump high enough to make it to this block. He actually has to bounce off of uh, the enemy's head to make it up there. So if you wanted to tweak that, all you'd have to do is go into the level, click on this, um, this invisible player rectangle, go into its platformer behavior, and then you can change its max walking speed, how fast it accelerates and decelerates. And obviously this one here is really important, uh, jump strength. Gravity uh, obviously changes how quickly it falls. Um, but let's say we increased this jump strength to 550. Uh, and now when I run the level,
Now he jumps really high. He made it all the way up there. So you can see you can tweak all of these numbers and very quickly to perfect how high you, your character jumps, how fast he falls, how fast he can move, and all of that. Uh, and there's no events evolved in that at all. So the events we're going to need are actually going to be events that affect uh, the built-in platform behavior that we've given this object. And just, to, uh, just so I can clarify this, uh, the reason there's a screen rectangle is I use that to control the player so that there's always a perfectly clean, um, never-changing rectangle uh, for use with colliding with walls, floors, ceilings, and things of that sort. Uh, and then what I do is I use events to stick the actual uh, sort of visual um, skin, we'll call it, for the player, uh, always in the same position as that rectangle. And we trigger the different animations to play depending on uh, what is happening in the, in the built-in platform behavior. Uh, so I'm going to make that invisible again, now that you've got the basic idea for that. And I'm also going to go back into the Levels Properties and turn back on its Event Sheet, or Reassign, I should say, the Level Events Event Sheet. Um, and now all of these events that I had previously made under Level Events now all of these uh, should be active again. Yeah, I just remembered one other thing I should do is put that number back to around 350. Uh, we don't want that initial jump to be super high on its own because then a double jump is not very useful in this case. Uh, so I put that back to normal. But there's one thing I have to set up before I um, actually start making the events for the double jump. Uh, and that is, I need somewhere to store a value, because I want this to be limited to a double jump. I don't want the uh, player to be able to jump infin infinitely in the air. Uh, I only want them to be able to do a second jump while in the air, and then they won't be able to do another jump until after they've landed. So the way I'm going to sort of count or keep track of whether or not they've done the second jump yet is by... Uh, there's a few ways you could do this, but the way I'm going to do it, the way that feels the most organized for me, is to actually create a variable within the, uh, the object itself, which in this case is the invisible player rectangle. So I just click on it, and if you see here, there's this uh, portion called instance variables. That's what I want to add to it. You can see there's already one I use called stuck and move. And what that does is it allows me... Um, to basically what I do in the events is set that to 1 whenever the player is stuck in the middle of an animation that he should not be able to do anything while he's doing that animation. For instance, once your enemy has got your once your player has gotten hit by an enemy and he's playing an ouch I got hit animation and flying backward, you don't want to be able to jump out of that or start walking. He the player needs to wait until the uh, until his character is done with the getting hit animation and movement. So all I do in the events is whenever something like that happens, I turn stuck and move to one, as, as in on. Uh, and that way, in my events, when I allow the player to do something, I check to see if stuck and move is set to zero and only let them do something if it's set to zero. If it's set to one, then they can't do that thing. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to create a new instance value uh, variable uh, by clicking plus, and I'm going to name it, uh, we can call it jump count, and its initial value should be zero, so we'll leave that alone. We'll click uh, OK, and we can close this now. So you can see now I have stuck and move and I have jump count. So now that I have this uh, variable all set up, it's time to go into the actual events uh, for the level and uh, start to make this double jump happen. And if you look up here on these tabs, one of them is called events, and this will bring up some stuff you can do um, while you're uh, editing events. And as you can see, I entered the word jump uh, in this search, and by pressing enter, 
now my events only show me the events having to do with uh, jumping or at least having the word jump somewhere in the text of the events. Um, so this was basically just to, to narrow down what events I'm looking at to ones only having to do with jumping uh, and so I could remind myself how I had uh, programmed or made the events for jumping uh, up to this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, a new event that allows me to do a jump out of the air in specific circumstances. And what those circumstances are, so I'm going to right click here and I'm going to choose insert new event above and then I have to pick what the event is, what happens. So in this case we want uh, keyboard control and we want um, on key pressed and then I click to choose and I click the up arrow click OK, done. So keyboard on up arrow pressed and then what I'm going to do is check a couple of more things. Um, one, we want it to be um, basically the way most double jump jumps work is you can't do the second jump of the double jump until the character just starts falling again. So we're going to make sure you can't do it during the upward motion of the jump, but you have to wait until the character is falling. So I'm going to um, click in here and choose add um, another condition. And now we're going to pick this, which has the built-in platformer behavior, and we're going to choose is falling. So now it's if the up arrow is pressed and uh, it's falling. Um, so now, uh, just uh, to demonstrate, we're going to continue. We're going to there, there should be at least one other condition here, but for now, uh, we're going to go into add action, and we are going to go into the platform behavior related uh, actions we can do uh, and you can see um, you can simulate control which uh, one of them is jump which is one way to do it and the limitation of this of course is whatever your jump strength is it's going to use that jump strength but let's say you want the second part of the double jump to actually go higher or less high than the normal jump, you don't want to do it that way. But that's one way to do it if you don't need that really fine control. But I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to go in and I'm going to go back to the uh, platform related uh, actions you can do. And I'm going to set the vector Y. And vector Y is the Y movement. Y is up and down on the screen. Uh, and in the case of most programs, including Construct2, negative numbers go up, positive numbers go down. Uh, so I'm going to set the vector y to something like, we'll try negative 400. Okay, so that means make, the, make it start moving upward at that uh, vector, or that velocity, so to speak. Um, so I'm going to click Done. Uh, and that's it for now. So if the keyboard up is pressed and the uh, guy is falling, uh, at the very least we should also have um, that the character is not stuck in a move like getting hit or something. So I can actually just control C to copy that and control V to paste that. So now the player also can't do this when he's stuck in some other move or getting hit or something like that. So now I'm going to run the level. So now what should happen is if I jump and then I'm falling again, I can just, I'm tapping the, uh, the up key as I start falling. And as you can see, I've got, in this case, an infinite jump instead of a double jump. And that is because I haven't used that variable yet that I had created. We're basically going to check. Uh, so I'm going to right click in here. I'm going to add another condition. And this time, I'm going to go to the variable I created, instance variable, and I'm going to compare an instance variable. And it's, uh, I, I don't want stuck in move, I want jump count. And remember, it starts as zero, and so I want it to be zero. So the only way you're going to be able to double jump is if jump count is zero. And what we're going to do, if it is zero and you do the double jump, we're immediately going to bring the uh, value, 
So I, I'm going back and um, I'm setting the value, the instance variable, of jump count to 1. So now, as you can see, what's happening is uh, if it's currently 0 and stuck in move is 0 and the character is falling and they press up, then it does the double jump, but it also sets the value to 1. So now it's 1. The next time you press up while you're falling, it's not going to double jump because it needs jump count to be, to be 0, but it's not. Now it's 1. All we need to do is find, um, we need to find the event that does something when the player, or we can create a new event, but in this case I'm trying to be very sparing with the events because the free version of Construct2 is limited to 100 events. So I'm going to use the events tab and search again, and this time I'm going to type in floor. And you can see there's actually quite a few uh, events related to floors in general. Only a few of them are going to apply to the player itself. So as you can see, this one says um, if the platform uh, object is not moving, that means left and right, and is on the floor, and is not in any way stuck in a move to change the, um, change the animation to idle in this case. Um, and um, so what we're going to do is add action. We're going to go in to the player's uh, rectangle and we're going to go to the instance variables and we're going to set the variable jump count back to zero. Okay, and here comes another one. I'm going to copy that to save time. I just left clicked on it to select it and then did control C. Uh, and then I can go down here, and this one is if it is moving, then you want him to be walking. Uh, and also we're going to set jump count to zero. Uh, and I think that's actually it. Yeah, so let's give it a try. So we're running it. And here we are, we're going to jump. Jump again, and I'm trying to double jump and I can't. But once I land on the ground, I can always double jump again. So now I can get up onto these platforms without having to bounce on enemies by doing the double jump. And I should mention that uh, to make the game really nice, what you can do, what I usually do when I'm making platformers, is create a unique animation for the second jump. Like maybe the character's doing a flip or something like that. Uh, but another thing you can do which won't take an, uh, an additional event, which is really nice, is simply add a cool, maybe flash effect, or um, just a little, almost a rocket exhaust sort of thing, or just a magical sort of flash near the character's feet that happens the instant you initiate the second jump. But for that, I'm going to need to create a little bit of new art, so I'll do that, and I'll be right back. I've made the artwork now for the uh, special effect for the double jump. And so you need to know how to insert a new sprite with a new animation. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to click this Layers tab so I can see which layer I'm working on. I'm going to lock the other one so I can't accidentally put something where I don't want it. I'm going to choose the foreground layer, FG, and I'm just going to go where uh, it's sort of empty down here, and I'm going to double click. And that tells it I want to add something, and then I pick Sprite by double-clicking, and then I click here again, and that tells it where to put it, and it opens up the uh, image editor. And in this case, I already pre-made the art, so I'm going to go into load. Uh, actually, down here, since I made three frames, I can right-click down in the animation frames and choose Import Frames. Then I can go into my desktop where I put the images and then choose 0, 1, and 2. I just held the shift key so I could multi-select in a row and click open. And that imported all three frames. And it's hard to see on the screen because it's just a white uh, ball that sort of morphs and becomes more transparent as it goes. Um, <clears throat> and now what I'm going to do is make sure its hotspot is set in a decent place. I know where the action point is on the sprite uh, for the player skin, so I'm going to put it a little higher up on the ball instead of in the center. 
and I'm going to right click on the origin point I just edited on this frame and choose apply to whole animation so now if you look uh, it's in the same spot relative to that frame on each and now that I've set that to be in the same uh, for each frame I can sort of optimize uh, or get rid of the wasted space on each of these frames like so sorry you can't see it here we go close that and crop that okay so now it's not wasting uh, precious memory with just clear pixels uh, and then I click on default I make sure it's the animation over here it's not set to looping I only want it to play once and then I can change the animation speed and we want this to be quite fast I don't remember how fast the animation speeds are so we'll just set it to 12 for now to see how that looks and we're going to close because we're done and now we can see this object here. I'll put it somewhere where we can see it easily because it gets lost on the white. Um, and now that I have clicked on it, I can give it behaviors. And another cool behavior, you can give a sprite. So you can basically get rid of something, something once it's been created, is a fade effect. So I'm going to click on fade. And now you'll see, and I can close this, under behaviors, there's fade. Uh, active at start is fine, fade in time, wait time, fade out time. Um, so we're going to give this, uh, it's already, the animation itself already has a built-in fade. So we're going to uh, create a very short wait time, uh, for instance, a half a second. Maybe it should even be shorter than that. Um, for instance, uh, we'll just do basically a third of a second. <clears throat> and then make the fade out time instant so zero and then after the fade is done destroy okay so which is the default setting so the cool thing is now this thing whenever it's created by an event uh, basically after a third of a second it's going to automatically destroy it all right so now we're going to go back into the events and all we have to do I have to go on projects tab sorry about that um, level events and then um, we have to look for we're going to use jump instead of floor because now we're going back to the uh, the actual we're looking for the actual event that does the double jump and that is right here so it is uh, up arrow is pressed, platform is falling, stuck in move is zero, jump count is zero. Uh, this is the thing that actually makes it jump by giving it a, um, a vector y of negative 400, which means move upward, and then set jump count to one. So we're going to choose add action. And uh, there's two ways to do it. You can uh, use system to spawn an object, or you can spawn an object uh, automatically sort of a, uh, associated with another object so I'm choosing the actual player rectangle and I choose under miscellaneous spawn another object and the layer is always in this game uh, I have it set up so that the layer we're always uh, creating objects on is the FG layer uh, it's called the same thing in all layouts or levels uh, image point zero is good and then um, we choose the object we want to spawn, which is the new sprite, which I should rename. I'll do that afterwards. But uh, this new sprite, sprite we created for the effect, and we click Done. So basically, uh, at its image point zero, it is creating that effect sprite um, on the same layer that it is on, and all, basically all of the moving uh, sprites for the game. Uh, so now we're going to go back to level one. And we're going to run the layer and see what happens. So we jump, we double jump, and as you can see, it's all working, except the effect is not disappearing when it should. So I've got a problem with the uh, fade out behavior. So let me look at that, let me check this. And uh, fade, active at start, fade in time zero, wait time. Um, is very short and then fade out time I guess fade out time can't be zero 
So we're going to do 0 0.01 and see if that fixes it. And there we go. I hope this was helpful to you. And um, basically it's a way, using this exact same technique, you can basically look for events that happen in the game and you can create other special effects. For instance, whenever the player collides or gets hit by an enemy, if you want to make an impact flash that's special, you could use the same exact method I just showed you to add effects like that. Or maybe you just want to add sprites all throughout the level that are animated trees or bushes that sort of blow in the breeze or something like that. Uh, you just saw how to add a sprite and add in its animation and then you can put it wherever you want in the level and it will automatically animate. So that's uh, the basics for adding a double jump. I hope it was useful for you. Thanks. Bye.